everyone, my name is Laura and this is Ironclass Expert Talks. In most of our previous episodes, we spoke about aviation from the passenger side of things. We spoke about airports, we spoke about airlines. But there is one topic that we did not touch, and that is air cargo. And if it is something that you're interested in, well, I've got good news for you because this episode of Expert Talk is dedicated entirely to this topic. The world lately has become increasingly interconnected and fast shipping is now vital to growing the global economy and facilitating global trade. And in recent decades, it is the aviation industry that has become the most effective means of transporting cargo in a safe and timely manner. Today, I am pleased to be joined by a true expert, someone who will introduce us to air cargo in a bit more detail, uh, detail and that is Celine Hurkay. So thanks, Celine, for taking your time to speak with me. Thank you, Laura. It's a pleasure for, for me to be, uh, to be there. Wonderful. I'm glad, as I said. Um, and I, without any further ado, I'm going to jump in straight to our questions because I'm sure me and our viewers are eager to learn more about you as a professional, as their instructor. And I'm going to begin with the same question uh, as I always do, which is how did your career in aviation start? Well, actually, I think it started when I was uh, three <laughs> with my first flight. I was flying alone uh, from France to Egypt, uh, where my grandma was uh, living. Um, so it's it's really when I I felt in love with uh, with aviation. Um, I've I've been traveling by air. Uh, so since the age of three, uh, my grandpa was uh, uh, a telecom engineer working with airports. Uh, so he was installing radio and satellites at every airport in the world. Uh, so I've I've always uh, you know had that in my in my mind. And then my first uh, job as a an intern just before graduation, um, I started with uh, Amadeus, which is the the GDS, so re really reservation system for for company uh, for airlines. Um, and, and it confirmed that uh, that's the sector I wanted to, uh, to work with. Uh, so that's my, my stop, you know, within, uh, within aviation. Um, and I had absolutely no clue uh, at that time that uh, uh, airlines were transporting something else than passenger and their baggage. So I discovered that uh, later. Uh, and actually in 2008 when i joined the the cargo uh, the cargo part i see i guess it's, it goes for everyone that when we're little we kind of imagine that the planes are for us to travel but it's also things that travel with them so that's it that's kind of cute that you started so early have there any, ever been any doubts about joining this industry or any regrets even no, actually, no doubt, no regret. Um, so what happened is um, I started uh, with Amadeus as an intern for uh, a bit more than six months. Um, and then I had for, you know, personal life, uh, personal reasons, uh, I, I moved to, to Paris and I joined a consulting company uh, for three years. And it was not, you know, specific to aviation and I was really missing it. Uh, so, although I'm made for consulting and that's, you know, uh, uh, a, a good reason why I came back, um, I wanted to, uh, to be in that sector, so I was, uh, I was keen on, on, on going back. So, I, I, I left my consulting firm after three years, having learned uh, a lot of things. Um, and, and I came back to Amadeus as, a, as an employee and then IATA, the International Air Transport Association, before I founded my own consulting company within the aviation and logistics sector. I see. And now you've got years of professional experience and yeah. I'm sure you had many different, you know, roles and projects and assignments. So can you tell us something that really stands out for you, something that you really think about dearly, you know, and you kind of reminisce in that? Yeah, you know what is uh, very um, uh, strange or very unique in in my career is that I never ever did a job that somebody else was doing before. 
meaning that I always uh, uh, created something or started a new position that was, you know, being created. I never took a job replacing somebody else. Um, and it's it's one of my drivers. It's and that's why I'm driving change. I'm driving transformation. I'm I'm always you know looking at ways to create something from scratch, uh, to change things, to to uh, anticipate the future and 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 yeah build on on the future build on. Uh, the innovation, etc. So that's that's uh, one of my uh, uniqueness in throughout my career. Uh, so that's you know that's something I really truly love, uh, driving change, uh, uh, building new things. So I've done I've done many things uh, throughout my career, as you mentioned. It it has been more than twenty years, doesn't. Uh, feel any any young <laughs> right now um but you know s stuff that i'm i'm particularly proud of are um projects that i run to uh um attract development talents uh in the air cargo industry so that's a, a program that i launched when i was part of uh, iata it's called face the future air cargo executives um, recently, uh, the Women in Aviation and Logistics uh, initiative that I launched also with a partner of mine uh, to 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 ensure that women in our industry get more visibility um, and and really to preach uh, for a gender balance in in the industry that uh, we are lacking of. Uh, so that's that's more on the you know people development side uh, because it's really an area where I'm I'm very interested in. Um, but my my uh, my expertise uh, and my studies were on digital transformation. So I've I've uh, you know run projects through uh, making you know like contributing to uh, to uh, move uh, Amadeus to so the reservation system into an e-travel e-booking uh, platform that it has uh, became so it was a long time ago uh, worked on the uh, e-ticketing uh, project that was uh, uh, run by by IATA uh, so getting rid of the paper uh, tickets for passenger replacing it by the e-ticketing uh, that we now all use when we travel uh, and then you know projects uh, within the the cargo sphere so on digital uh, projects and more recently on uh, sustainability uh, projects so that's you know my my I would say the the three uh, steps it's digital transformation sustainable transformation and also initiatives that can uh, bring something to to the people that are uh, working in the industry right i see and you also mentioned uh, that project uh, women in aviation and logistics and i think it'd be a shame for us not to talk about it. we're two ladies talking and i'm sure someone's watching who's also a lady and i think it's also useful for our gentlemen to know a bit more about this project so can you just tell us a bit more about what that is and uh, what kind of uh, agenda does this project have yeah. So Women in Aviation and Logistics um, has uh, started on International Women's Day uh, last year in 2021. Um, and it's, um, you know, it came uh, after a very simple, uh, uh, simple uh, thing that happened is I, I've been in this industry for quite a while now. Uh, and I've, I've attended many industry events, conferences, etc. Uh, always, you know, unhappy uh, to see so uh, few women attending those events and even uh, less on stage speaking. Uh, but I've, I've, you know, I integrated the, the, the fact that uh, it's an old fashioned industry 
old boys club uh, industry. So this is like heritage from the past and this is, you know, going to change. But last year, uh, just before the uh, the uh, International Women's Day, uh, so we were in the middle of the pandemic, uh, lots of uh, uh, events or majority of the events were actually canceled and replaced by online versions. So I was, you know, like attending uh, online uh, webinars and there is this uh, this session organized by uh, uh, an incubator of startups. So innovation driven, future driven, etc. 20 speakers on that uh, on that event. Only young people and only male. And I was like listening to them you know regardless of uh, their creativity their mindset etc i was like puzzled and really really furious because i i understand that you know we were in an old-fashioned uh, old boys club type of industry and this is uh, coming from the past but if today the future leaders the new uh, innovators the startups etc they are all run by men uh, it means that we are going to uh, perpetrate the issue for years and decades so i was like no this is this is just this is wrong and I know that there are they are women already in the industry and and they are just not you know invited to speak, not heard, not visible enough. Uh, so I'm not pretending with that uh, initiative that we are going to replace men by women when they don't exist. What I wanted to do was really having offering a pragmatic solution, not pointing fingers at people. This is not how you drive change. Uh, I wanted to have something that was positive and to offer a pragmatic solution. Okay, let's build a database of female experts in aviation and logistics so that if you are an event organizer, if you are a company that is looking for board members, if you uh, are a journalist uh, that is looking for experts to interview, or any any type of uh, people that are looking for expertise, you can go in the in the database. It's online. It's free, and you search for uh, the database to find uh, female experts in the area you you want to um, uh, to cover. And and we started like that. So with my partner uh, Emma Murray from Meantime Communication, uh, because the two of us we uh, we. Uh, uh, we we were meeting each other at industry events, you know, regularly, and we were uh, also frustrated the two of us with with that. So we wanted to to do something about that, and we decided that we would do uh, we would drive a movement for positive change. So that's really the aim: positive change. So not pointing fingers, but trying to say, okay, let's. Let's all work together to do, you know, small steps that would uh, would go in the right direction. So that's really what we want to, to achieve with women in aviation and logistics. You mentioned before that you're someone who is leading change. And I think, you know, it's wonderful to hear that you're taking this action as well. Um, and then, you know, you also joined the our class instructor bunch and you're also kind of showing that, you know, women are instructors too. Uh, so I wanted to ask, you know, what attracted you to our class? Why did you join uh, our digital e-learning platform? You know, one of the things that I'm um, uh, advocating is uh, in this industry to be future-proof. Future uh, we need to make sure that uh, we have solid uh, training uh, programs for any type of uh, staff working in the air cargo industry. So it, it's not only about, uh, you know, the talent detection for future leaders. It's it's about, you know, all uh, type of skills. We came from the pandemic, uh, realizing that we lost a lot of um, uh, skills because of the, the economic situation. Uh, so that's true, uh, you know, across the uh, the aviation industry. Uh, that that also some activities are 
uh, gaining more importance uh, compared to others because of the pandemic. So it's there is a constant need of uh, right skilling and uh, the workforce uh, upskilling, cross skilling, whatever skilling uh, you you want. So it means that training uh, offers are very important. I think training to you know so far has been quite expensive. So because it's expensive when you go into classrooms, etc., then you limit it somehow to just a category, just mandatory training or uh, but we need to to have a broader uh, access to uh, to training. So I I strongly believe that we need to to have more affordable training, modern uh, delivery uh, mechanism also for uh, for people to, to uh, you know, take the training when they need, where they need, uh, at the pace they need. So it's, it goes with uh, the flexibility uh, in the work uh, workplace. It goes with the uh, remote uh, working practices. It goes with also the new mindset, you know, around social media, short uh, attention spam, etc. So I. I really feel that we uh, we need to uh, to have more of those uh, trainings. So I was super happy uh, when IO class contacted me to uh, to to be one of the instructor because it's really in line with uh, what I'm preaching. You know, for the industry or for my clients, you need to invest more in uh, modern and affordable training and to have uh, that available for all your staff and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So I think it's it's actually. Uh, uh, walk the talk, uh, if I may say uh, like that. It, it's a match made in heaven, <laughs> sort of. Absolutely. <laughs> so uh, I promised in the beginning of this talk that we're going to speak about air cargo, and that is exactly what your course covers. So I would love for you to introduce this course to our viewers. Just tell us, you know, what it's about and who should benefit from it. Well, that's a uh, really introduction to air cargo management. So what is not about that course, you are not going to know, you know, how you uh, weight cargo or label cargo and prepare cargo for shipping. This is, this is not, uh, you know, what the course is, is all about. Uh, but that's, that's uh, an introduction to understand what is this industry uh, doing, why it matters for the world, for the economy, for the society, and for the companies. Uh, so it's it's designed for uh, new uh, joiners in the industry to really have the big picture. You know, very often we say that, uh, you know, as an employee, we don't really know how we fit, you know, within the big picture. So that's that's one way to to know where you fit in the big picture when you join air cargo. It's also uh, designed for employees that are uh, moving from passenger business, for instance, because, you know, passenger is, uh, is uh, uh, not going so well today uh, and, and uh, moving to, uh, to the cargo department. There are many things that uh, are similar, but there are also many differences between, you know, passenger and cargo. So that's that's also a way to uh, to explain what are the those big differences, etc. Again, to have that understanding on you know what is that that big picture, and and this is you know a, a course that I've designed uh, on what I I I wish I had when I started with cargo. So I I mentioned I was working on the passenger side before, and I moved to cargo in two thousand and eight. And, and honestly, you know, when I moved to cargo, I had no introduction to uh, the car cargo business. So everything I had to learn by myself, discover by chance, uh, reading things, etc. It took me a while to have, you know, a bigger picture on, on that industry. And, and I think it's, it's uh, an accelerator to, to your efficiency to have that big picture to start with. So that's really uh, what it's all about. So I'm uh, in the course, I'm looking at, uh, you know, what we are talking about, who the stakeholders are, uh, what what is it, cargo? 
but also the history of uh, cargo because I I believe strongly that you need to understand the past to to uh, to be in the present but also to uh, anticipate the future um, and it it's valid for for the for the, the cargo business so I'm looking at the history uh, part uh, talking about you know the global trends affecting uh, cargo today and trying to provoke you know some uh, thought leadership approach with uh, with the students so that they can say okay so now that I have a better understanding of that picture uh, you know maybe I can project myself into the future and 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 be myself. Uh, an active player in that, you know, build, uh, in building the future for my company. Yeah, thank you, Celine. I think that's a great introduction. Um, and I had an opportunity to check out the course myself. Okay. Um, and uh, I did find the history part of it quite fascinating because I would never thought that the first air cargo was uh, made in 18. 50, uh -huh. something like that. So that's <laughs> a really long time ago when you think about it. Um, and you speak about three different phases of that history. And I don't want to give too much away so our viewers could check it out themselves. But is there one particular phase that fascinates you the most? Or maybe made a, a, the biggest impact on what we have as air cargo today? So the, the, the modern age of air cargo is what is... Uh, is, is clearly uh, more impactful today and it's really what uh, has shaped uh, what uh, air cargo is uh, is today however um i'm fascinated by the the early days early days of aviation early days of air transport in general um and and the reason why is that you know if you think about the progress that was made in just 100 years and, and you look at today what is in the pipeline for aviation. We talk about autonomous vehicles. We talk about clean aircraft. Uh, so many people are saying it's never going to happen. But just look at, you know, the past and the type of uh, aircraft we, uh, we had 100 years ago. And if you look at that and if you see really the progress, you can project yourself into the future and say, yes, it's actually, uh, you know, it can happen. It will happen. We will have clean aircraft. We will have very different type of uh, vehicles that that will transport people and uh, goods. Um, and, and that will, you know, feed the needs of the future. That's really a, a, a strong belief that I have not only a belief a hope as well so we need and you know it's one of my drivers it's to look at sustainability so we definitely need to um, change the way we do things including change the way we transport goods um, everything that works in the modern era of air cargo the speeds the the express the 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 like, large volumes and and you know supporting uh, globalization just in time etc you you'll heard you you will heard that in the in the course um it was good at that time but we know it's it had uh, uh bad consequences on on our planet on uh you know the the relationship also between between continents and uh, the the power uh, between con continents, etc. So, it you know the world is going to change. The world has to change because there is no choice. So it's you know the 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 air transport has to evolve also to adapt to that change. Um, but if you look at the 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 history, you you see you know how uh, the this sector is able to transform. So there is no uh, doubt that that sector is going to transform again to adapt to the future challenges. And how long do you think these adaptations last? Because um, if we're looking at the future, right? So now we do kind of like a 180 turn from history to the future. Um, how 
fast can we expect, let's say, the sustainability aspect of it? Or is it a really, really long change that takes a lot of time? So with the pandemic, we saw that uh, our sector can change and adapt extremely fast in terms of processes, in terms of digital adoption, in terms of change of, you know, mindset. Many things uh, have happened at a very fa fast pace uh, during the pandemic. We also know that um, we are still considered as old fashioned and slow to change so at the same time. So what it means, and my conclusion to that is, you know, when there is a will, there is a way. But if this is not taken seriously enough, if this is not prioritized by senior uh, leadership teams in individual private companies, by governments, um, then, you know, it's going to be slow. If there is uh, an imperative to change, it will change and we can move uh, fast. So this is for, you know, adapting processes, uh, trade flows, uh, moving to uh, alternative fuels, for instance, to cleaner um, uh, energy. So this can happen fast. The, the aircraft design itself changing completely from, you know, from one aircraft to another, adopting uh, unmanned aviation, it takes, uh, uh, you know, longer in, in the time uh, time range uh, because it's it's uh, it's way more complex in terms of regulations, in terms of safety, uh, you know, certification processes, etc. So it, it will take, you know, several decades in that sense. But there are many things that can happen now if there is a will, a real, if there is also a push from uh, governments to uh, to uh, uh, push for the that uh, transformation. So, if if we have no choice, we will uh, we will change. And other than the future change plans, what are the other challenges that air cargo currently faces most often? Um, at the in in the current you know situation, it's uh, you know being. Uh, very uh, focus on the present, the capacity challenge. While in a few years back, it was over capacity. So we had uh, too much capacity in the air, uh, not enough cargo to fill the, 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 the space in the, uh, in the aircraft. Uh, so it was, you know, pricing were down, yields were down for airlines and for the aviation uh, community. It's not uh, anymore the case uh, ever since uh, the COVID pandemic uh, started because we have uh, passenger aircraft that were grounded and the passenger traffic that uh, has not recovered uh, fully yet. So it means that uh, we have less capacity. Uh, concretely, uh, as we speak now, we have the, um, the war in Ukraine uh, it, it does change also a lot of things in capacity, in routing. So it's, it's going to impact uh, trade flows, pricing, um, yeah, customs. The geopolitical agenda is, uh, is having definitely a huge impact on, on logistics, so not only on, on aviation, but on every uh, logistics uh, aspect. Uh, one thing that is also extremely um, uh, uh, important and challenging today, uh, and it's not only uh, on aviation or on logistics, it's also on hospitality, on, uh, it's, it's the, this great resignation uh, trend. So, you know, people during the pandemic working from home or they, they just change their priorities in life. They want something different in their, uh, in their life and their work-life balance. And, you know, it's so we have uh, also uh, a, um, a shift in terms of, uh, you know, working conditions, working uh, or labor power. Uh, so lots of companies in, in our industry, they are, 
facing labor shortages. Uh, they have difficulties to hire, especially for the frontline uh, workers, the low paid uh, uh, workers, etc. So it, it means that, you know, there is a, a, a transformation by itself that needs to happen in the way we, uh, we are attracting people, developing them, retaining them. So back to uh, your mission as uh, within Aeroclass, you have uh, a great role to play to, um, uh, to, to provide, you know, the, a platform for for uh, up and right skilling the the workforce uh, so that's one of the the challenge that we have also in our industry so lastly because uh, i'm glad you touched upon this this question of choosing uh, this career in air cargo and for someone who's watching and not sure if they want to kind of get into it i want you to give them some piece of advice why should one join air cargo industry in my opinion, that's a fascinating industry. Uh, we literally save the world, uh, save lives, transporting vaccines, and that's really what uh, we saw also during the pandemic. Without air cargo, there would be no uh, COVID uh, vaccines, not even the PPEs, you know, that, that were uh, flown uh, everywhere in the world. Uh, we, um, uh, you know, as a, as an industry, we we are also the ones uh, serving hard to reach uh, communities where you know the surface um, infrastructure doesn't exist or has been detro destroyed by natural disasters, by war, etc. Um, so, for the healthcare, for the humanitarian um, aid, etc., we play a, a critical role. Outside of that, we transport many uh, goods that, you know, from one region to another region, and it does uh, contribute to develop socially and economically uh, some parts of the world. Um, so we have we have like a great mission to uh, to fu to fulfill. So that's that's fantastic. But it's also uh, an industry that, as I said, it's still old fashioned. Uh, it has many challenges to make it more sustainable. Let's say, you know, with air cargo, thanks to air cargo, thanks to airlines, we can help, uh, you know, some, some countries, uh, developing nations to develop, you know, uh, uh, their economical uh, situation, let's say uh, the flower industry with Kenya uh, or Colombia, uh, Ecuador, etc. So those countries, they can like grow flowers, send flowers by, um, by air to Europe or North America and, and have, uh, uh, you know, social and economic development. Having said that, so that's great, but we also realize that it has, you know, impacts on the planet. Uh, and we need to address that. We can't just be blind on that. So it means that there are so many things, so many new challenges that we need to address. It's like a, a world of opportunity for anyone that wants to make a good impact on the, on the planet, on the world itself, to say, okay, you know, I'm going to join that industry that is uh, serving the world, but maybe not the best way today. And there are so many things that you know, the new generation can bring to, uh, to that industry to make, to change it for good. So that's, that's a world of opportunity. Yeah. So do it, join us. It's fascinating. And it's also fascinating as an industry um, to be connected with so many cultures, uh, countries, nationalities. Uh, that's also, you know, a, an open window to the world. That's something I love. That is just a wonderful way to end our chat. I think you wrapped it up so nicely and you kind of showed that this industry is both rewarding and challenging. And I think that's really, really wonderful because you want to be challenged in your position, but also that's you want to feel like you know, you're doing something great. So I want to thank you, Celine, for, for joining me today uh, and sharing your experience and your expertise uh, with me and our viewers. And I hope you also found this talk quite entertaining. <laughs>
Absolutely. Thank you, Laura. It was it was great uh, talking to you and and looking forward to uh, uh, next opportunities. Sure thing, sure thing. So if you too, our viewers, want to learn more about Air Cargo and to do that with Celine's help, uh, I invite you all to visit ourclass.org and check out her course. So thank you very much again for joining me, Celine. Thank you to our viewers for watching and take care. Thank you.